In this video, I'll be redesigning a book cover for The Bite in the Apple by Chrisanne Brennan and turning it into an apple-inspired design. The last two books I've read have been about the life of Steve Jobs. The first, Small Fry, is a memoir by his first daughter, Lisa Brennan Jobs. I quickly fell in love with this book, not because of the backdrop of the story, but because it really was a memoir of a young girl and a complicated relationship with her father. Then once I found out that Lisa's mother, Chrisanne Brennan, also wrote a memoir, I read that immediately afterwards. I thought it would be a fun exercise to redesign this cover. I realized that a lot of memoirs have covers that are photographic like this, and it makes sense that you would want to include a photo of Steve Jobs just because at the end of the day, it will sell more copies. But I was inspired to redesign it and give it that Apple design. What's unique about the perspective of this book is it shares a glimpse into the early life of Steve Jobs before Apple, before he got famous, before he really became a groundbreaking leader in computers. For this reason, I knew immediately that I wanted to include one of the earliest versions of the Apple logo. So I researched online for these early logos and came across several of them. Here's a timeline of how the Apple logo has changed over the years. I didn't want to use this earliest one from 1976 because most people won't really recognize it, but a lot of people do recognize the rainbow version that was used from 1977 to 1998. Normally I might search online for inspiration and sketch out ideas for a possible solution for this book cover, but the idea for the concept of this book cover came to me quickly. I feel like the name of the book is very symbolic, the bite in the apple. In the book, Chris Ann mentioned that there were two things that Steve told her. One, that he would lose his soul in this world, and two, that he would die young. For the concept of this book, I wanted to lean into the idea that Steve always believed he would lose himself in this world. So immediately, the image of an apple escaping the grasp of a hand came to me. I felt this was a symbolic way of showing Steve, as in the Apple logo, escaping the human touch. When I was looking for photos of hands, I had a very distinct idea of the emotion I wanted to convey in mind. I pulled a bunch of different photos. These were some of my favorites. While I liked this set, I felt that some of them were too expressive. I wanted something a little more neutral. I loved the emotions in these hands, but the lighting and shadows were too dramatic and I knew that wouldn't match the mood of my design. I also looked at photos of multiple hands that are reaching out and just different gestures. And I ended up settling on this one. So I brought the photo into Photoshop and removed the background. I created a new document that was the same size as the book cover, which was six and a quarter inches by nine and a half inches. I drag and dropped that photo of the hand with the mask into my new file. I also drag and dropped in the original Apple logo. From here, there was a lot of micro decisions that I made, such as changing the size of the hand, changing the size of the Apple logo, moving the position slightly, trying to get the right proportions. When it came time to add the typography for the title and the author of the book, I played around with using some of the original Apple typefaces. For the title, The Bite in the Apple, I wanted to use the recognizable typeface for Apple, which is Myriad Pro Semi Bold. I also wanted to use this typeface because I knew it would give it a modern feel and look like Apple. But for the secondary typeface that I would use for the type that says a memoir of my life with Steve Jobs and for the author name, Chrisanne Brennan, I wanted to pair it with one of the Apple sans serifs. According to some research online, one of the early typefaces that was used around the same time as this rainbow logo was ITC Garamond, or I think they renamed it and it was called Apple Garamond. I only have Adobe Garamond, so I played around with using that. And then it was about getting the right type sizes. 
what should be the highest in importance? Well, obviously the title, but how much importance should that subtitle be? And what about the author name? Instead of keeping all the type together in one block, I decided to separate the author name by pulling it down to the bottom. Since Apple design is minimal and modern, I wanted to stick with a centered design. I could have played with the placement of the type more, but I just went with my gut and stuck with the centered design. Design is about trying something, seeing if it works, trying something else, and just playing around. So that's what I continued to do with these bits of type, just to get the right relationship between each of them and also the apple and the hand. I knew I wanted to keep the background white because it's a signature color of Apple and their branding and packaging. I wanted to keep the design of this book cover minimal and symbolic. Right away, it looks like something designed by Apple, and you also get the idea subconsciously. When I was choosing the photo and thinking about how to compose the design, it was very important that the apple was above rather than the apple falling from the hand Instead, it was like it was flying away from the hand, up. Because the story is about the early Steve Jobs, there was a lot of life ahead of him. Yes, the seeds of Apple were growing, but all of the success was to come. So that's why I wanted the design to reflect this optimistic feel. If the apple was falling from the hand, then it would be more of maybe the decline of Apple or the decline of Steve Jobs. And this is the final book cover design. This was a pretty quick design exercise. Right away I knew the concept that I wanted to execute. It was just about putting together the pieces. And I was also inspired by something that I recently read. As an extra step, let's mock this up as if it was a real book cover design. No matter what you're designing, you always want to present it the best way possible. So in this case, since it's a book cover, We'll mock it up so that it looks like a physical book. I found this PSD mock-up for free online. Usually what you'll do is you'll double click on one of the layers and then you put your artwork on that layer, save it, and then it populates automatically. And this is the final result. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about this design? Does it feel Apple to you? How would you redesign this book cover or any book about Steve Jobs? Leave a comment down below and let me know. If you found this video of me sharing my design process with you helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more. And here's a couple of other videos you can check out that you might like.